The top story at this hour, in fact, uh, utter chaos and violence has descended on the streets as Hong Kong entered the 17th straight week of protest from petrol bombs to tear gas. Yesterday night was marked by violent clashes between the police and protesters. These dramatic visuals on your screens there are from last night. City's police arrested almost a dozen protesters from around the government headquarters. And you can see there how officers are seen grappling with protesters and pinning them to the ground while detaining them. Water cannons fired blue dye, which is a tactic to distinguish these offenders in the crowd. Anti-China sentiments have reached uh, new levels in Hong Kong. Take this in incident there from yesterday. Protesters assaulted an unidentified man who they claim to be a Beijing supporter. He was attacked by protesters clad in all black before being pulled away. The protesters hurled uh, petrol bombs and bricks at government buildings and the police responded by firing tear gas and water cannons. The violence also attracted the attention of Britain's Foreign Secretary, Dominique Raab, who said that uh, the country could not look the other way where protesters are beaten up in Hong Kong. The violence comes merely a day ahead of China's National Day, which is celebrated on the 1st of October. Pro-Beijing groups undertook mass rallies in the city with around 200 people wearing red t-shirts, taking to the streets ahead of China's 70th anniversary. Hong Kong government announced, however, that Chief Executive Carrie Lam will not be attending the National Day celebrations, which will, of course, avoid a possible confrontation. For those struggling for the basic liberties we take for granted, the rights you jealously guard here this week to debate to have your say, to hold your politicians to account. So we won't look the other way when the people of Hong Kong are beaten on commuter trains for exercising their right to peaceful protest. And for more on this, our reporter Gracely said, is this report straight from the streets of Hong Kong? Well, I'm here in Hong Kong city center, and if you take a look behind me, you can see that police have swarmed this area. Earlier in the day, it was completely overrun by protesters uh, up until the point where police kind of stormed the area, pinning several protesters to the ground, and we saw some pretty violent images, several rounds of tear gas fired, and of course, water cannons, and protesters hitting back by throwing petrol bombs. Uh, and I've heard that uh, two different metro stations have been closed today due to fires caused by those petrol bombs. Uh, and the images that we've seen throughout the day of the protests here have been particularly violent and that's concerning considering the fact that Hong Kongers say that this is just kind of a preview for what might happen on Tuesday which is China's National Day a big holiday in Beijing and Hong Kongers say that they're going to mark that holiday by protesting here and showing Beijing that Beijing has to listen and that they have a message that they will not stop fighting for their freedoms here. Now, uh, today's march in particular was uh, what they called a fight against totalitarianism. And it was a march that wasn't just set here, but around the world. There were 72 cities that uh, raised their hand to participate uh, in a bid to show their solidarity with the protests that are happening here. Uh, so. Uh, based on the fact that we've seen some pretty heavy violence here today and, of course, there were protests yesterday that saw some violence as well, uh, police will likely be bracing for another uh, day of heavy uh, clashes with protesters on Tuesday. In the meanwhile, thousands have rallied in Sydney and Taipei to support the Hong Kong pro-democracy supporters. More than 1,000 people kicked off anti-totalitarian -total uh, demonstrations in uh, Sydney and around 2,000 people in Taipei as Global Day to extend support to the Hong Kong protesters. The protesters in Sydney were spotted holding signs that read Save Hong Kong and Stop 
tyranny, while others carried yellow umbrellas and handed out paper cranes in scenes that played out in scenes that played out, in fact, in other major cities across Australia. Meanwhile, in Taipei, people dressed in black gathered and amid heavy rains outside the parliament to extend solidarity to the democratic movement of Hong Kong. Similar rallies are being held in over 40 cities worldwide to extend solidarity to the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement that began in June.